Okay, welcome. Um, last time we uh, were constructing the return series. That was the part one of how to bring the data all into one simple uh, Excel file. Uh, the next thing that we need to continue on doing now is to, to construct the scatter plots for the individual stocks, these four stocks here, versus the market, um, as well as uh, drawing on the same graph, uh, time series plots for the selected companies uh, versus uh, or as well as the market okay so what I've done beforehand here is the date okay as well as the title head for all of these and uh, I don't need the date for now so what I need to do next is actually construct a monthly return okay of uh, each and every one of these how do I do that so what I do is that I take this month's price minus last month's price divided by last month's price and what I get is actually a monthly uh, return for this uh, specific stocks here. I will repeat uh, for all of these, okay, uh, with the exception of the one year T bill. Okay, I don't need to know what is the month to month change of the T bill. What I need to know are, are the actual for the stocks as well as the market. As for the T bill, all I need to do is actually just copy across what is the actual monthly uh, interest rates at that time okay so this is basically uh, all the returns okay um, of uh, of the stocks itself okay mind one thing that you need to be mindful of is that these are expressed in decimal places and the uh, t-bill is also uh, unfortunately expressed in a different format okay uh, this is in percentage format so uh, again, when you're manipulating data like this, uh, these kind of things always happen, so you need to be aware of that. So uh, instead of uh, leaving it at that, uh, what I suggest you to do is actually take the data and divide it by 100, okay, so that they're all uh, the same unit. Otherwise, uh, when you're actually constructing the data later, it's going to confuse you. The other thing is that the format uh, is slightly different, so I'll just uh, copy across. Okay, so how do you actually construct all three or four uh, five of these into the same graph and compare them uh, with re uh, reasonably so the next thing you do is that you need to base them all okay uh, have them all based from the same starting point in this case we're going to use a thousand okay a thousand for all of these series here and next thing you do is that you take thousand you multiply by the month to month changes Okay, and you copy it down okay, and you repeat the same for all of these okay so um, th this is the basic part of how to actually construct uh, the changes on a month-to-month -month basi basis now we can actually draw all of these all of these series here into one graph so we just select all of these okay and uh, construct the line graph and move the chart into a new sheet okay and this there you have it okay uh, have this uh, I'll just format some of these uh, so that we can actually see the chart a little bit better okay you will see that this is M1 <coughs> this top one here is Wheelock sorry uh, followed by this uh, Suntec, STI, Singpose and the blue one here is uh, M1. Okay, you can see that probably the most volatile of all of these are uh, is Willock. And during the 2007 period, it was uh, rallying very strongly, and then they tend to actually correlate very strongly and all down. But uh, as you can see here, the M1 is not down as much uh, as Willock. Willock was very volatile during this period, and it also um, what recovered the, the fastest is actually Suntech in this case. So uh, it's very interesting when you actually study this in detail and see how each stock's uh, characteristics and uh, how it actually um, behave. And uh, you can actually from here get a rough idea of uh, the tendencies and behavior of uh, each stocks. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do is actually construct the scatter plots. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, show an example uh, of uh, M1. Okay, um, highlight M1. Okay, and pressing the control button uh, and select STI as well. And you scroll down all the way to the end of the period. Okay, so uh, go to select scatter graph or scatter plot, <coughs> and then uh, again put it in the new sheet. Okay, this is uh, M1. Unfortunately, it's uh, 
just before that plot okay and you have the actual um, example here all right there's only one problem with this is that um, STI is being expressed up here okay what that means is that STI is actually uh, the variable now we don't want that STI it should be an x-axis and y-axis okay should be the stock itself now how do we actually correct this all right in order to correct this um, what we need to do is actually uh, do it by this method here select the data under edit first thing is to actually change the name to m1 okay the second thing to do is actually change okay this is the um, X series okay for the X series we need to change it to the data of the STI so highlight STI okay the next thing is highlight Y okay the Y data in this case is M1 okay um, so click OK and this is what it should look like okay M1 being the title M1 on the legend okay once you have done this uh, you need to repeat this for all four stocks all right, I've completed Suntech, SyncPost, and WeLog. And uh, M1 was the one originally that we did, and uh, WeLog is the latest one that we did. Now, the one thing about WeLog is that I haven't actually uh, swapped that around yet, so I'm just going to reshow you that again. Go to Select Data, okay, under Edit, change first of all the title to WeLog. Second thing is change the X axis. The X should be the um, STI which is the market here so select the market data followed by Y Y value the Y value should be we lock in this case okay so if you look at it again X should be STI which is M M okay M3 to M74 Y being the stock that's variable uh, L3 to L74 click the OK and this is what you have okay so far we've constructed scatter plots and also the um, <clears throat> rebased uh, time series returns of all the uh, four stocks plus the STI. So, okay, the next thing that we need to do is to actually go through each and every one of these and add the um, uh, trend line. Okay, this is uh, based on the linear, uh, also what we call linear regression. Uh, select display equation on chart and also display R square. Okay, so when you look at this, all right, uh, it's telling you 0.3966, this is beta, all right, uh, 0.0022 is where it cuts on the axis, okay, uh, on the y axis. R squared tells you how well this model that we've come up with uh, fits, okay, the whole uh, variability of the data. Uh, it only explains 17 or 18 percent of the variability of the data, so not very good. Okay, so these are the things that you need to be aware of. Uh, we repeat the same with uh, Suntech. Okay, again, choosing linear, select display equation and also display R square. Okay, and uh, and this is the information that you get. I have repeated the same process for SingPose and as well as WeLock. So if you compare all of these, you can see the M1 beta is about 0.4. Suntex uh, beta is about 1.38, SingPose is 0.4766, and WeLock. Okay, so from this you can draw the conclusion that WeLock as well as Suntex are the most uh, volatile. Uh, SingPose is 0.47, uh, M1 should be the least volatile of all at 0.4. Okay, so when you look at the chart that we plot earlier, you can see that M1 is actually very flat all the way as well as this green one here that shouldn't be a surprise to us that is sync post okay and then we have STI followed by the last two here which is Suntech as well as WeLock okay and the actual beta that we've calculated uh, certify this as well so this is uh, the constructions of uh, the time series okay that we're looking for as well as the scatter plot